So in this video, we are going to create a bot that reads an Excel file for supplier names, their email, and the amount that we owe. And we are going to generate confirmation letters and send them via email. So here I have opened up a RPA Studio, but there is some pre-work we need to do. We need to create a sample template and our data list. Uh, this is simple enough. So what I have is a folder called RPA folder. And the folder file that we need first is a Word document. And you can create any Word document, a brand new one. And here's the document that I have. And I just have a very simple letter. Obviously, when you're doing this for real, you would have a more formal a letter than what we have here but it just has dear supplier name now keep track of what you put there in bold because that is exactly how we need to have our headings in the Excel spreadsheet so I'm using supplier name with no space and um, I just put yeah our company is Acme Inc and the amount that we owe is amount so we just need to remember those two field names and then sign it. And if you're working in teams or having students do it, have them sign the letters with their name. So I'm going to save this in the folder and I'm calling it confirmation template. And I do have a space in there. It doesn't matter if that you copy mine, but it's more important that you remember exactly how you name yours. So we are going to go ahead and close that. And now you want to create um, an Excel file, and I have named mine Excel, uh, sample data file. You could name it supplier list, which probably would have been a little bit better. So I kind of have a junk email there um, that I use just for testing things. And I have supplier name, amount, and an email address. Okay, and I just happen to have it for three suppliers. I put in bogus amounts, doesn't matter. Um, and you can use different email addresses. I am using the same one just for testing purposes. But obviously teams that are working together or you can have the, them put in your um, the professor's email address when they do their final run. Okay, so that is part of the setup that we need to do. Those two files are created and set up. This completed letter will actually get created, so we don't need that to start. Ignore the other two folders. They were just some temporary files. So you need those two files, once again, the Excel worksheet and the sample, sample data full, uh, file. Um, you can name them whatever you want. Just keep track of what you want to name them. All right, so now we are going to go to uh, UiPath, and you want to make sure this says Studio X. And if it doesn't say Studio X, we're going to go ahead and fix that. So what you want to do is go to Settings, License and Profile, Change Local, not Change Local License. You want to go to Change Profile, and make sure you're selecting Studio X. Okay, and then we're going to go back to start. So for this one, we are going to actually start with a template, which will actually make it easier. So with this template, if it's not here, we're going to look for one that says complete word template from Excel and email. You may have to go to more templates and search for that. And it happens to be here for me. Okay, and I'm going to say use template. We want to go ahead and rename this. I'm just saying RPA confirmation letter demo. And you can select uh, where you want all of your UI, your UI path documents stored. And I'm just going to leave it there. And that's kind of the default. All right, notice that it automatically fills in a lot. What we're going to do is change some of these fields and update it and create our bot. I'm going to take a moment and close this. 
and I'm going to open, I'm going to go back to start, and I'm going to open one that is already completed just because it's a little easier to film and talk through it. So to add things to this, we just actually drag and drop. But we don't have to do much. We only have to do that for um, which, depending on which email service you're using. All right. So we don't make any changes. This is just information. I, I suggest taking a moment to read it. So we want to, first of all, keep track of our numbering. So when you ch make changes, make sure the numbers match what's in this video. So we are going to go ahead and say use Excel file. And I'm just going to use this and I will switch to go ahead and find my RPA folder and I would select the sample data file. We are going to call this supplier list. Once again, it doesn't matter what you name it. Just remember what you are trying to use. Um, we actually don't want to say create if it doesn't exist because we know it exists. All right, and what we're going to say, we only have one sheet of data in there, so that's okay. We didn't need to rename anything. So what we're going to say is make sure this is 2.1. It should have been if you haven't moved anything. We want to say for each current row, so it's going to look at each current row, and we want to go to supplier list, and we'll just say sheet one. Now, because we did put in headers, we do want to signify that with this checkbox. We don't need to resave it because we're not making any changes to that Excel spreadsheet. So what we have next is embedded within. So this says for each row. So this is a step for each row. So keep in mind, we're kind of got a hierarchy going here. So we have should this should be number 2.1.1. So we're going to use this Word document. So we're going to open up the confirmation template and we don't need to really create it because it is created and we're going to, uh, we're in the wrong spot here. I'm gonna to go to my RPA folder and I will select that confirmation template. Then we want to save it and we can select, uh, we're just gonna select a dot dox uh unfortunately pdf right now for this option is not one of the options you could use a different um item on here to save it as a pdf but we're going to just stick with word and this time we're going to say completed letter this way we don't accidentally overwrite our template we're saving it as something else but we're just even though we have three suppliers in the excel workbook we're just going to keep reusing it. So we're going to say replace existing. And keep in mind, so we're now, this is under use Word documents. So look at the numbering 2.1.1.1. All right. And then within that Word document, we're going to have two replace text in Word file. So it's going to, we're going to say search for, and I, what I'm going to do is say supplier list, and I'm going to indicate in Excel. What it's going to do is open up that file, and we are going to go ahead and click on cell A1, which is where supplier name is. And what we want to do is replace with current row supplier name. All right, so I just go ahead and select it here. Notice these are the three columns that we have. And we're going to do the exact same thing with the amount. For either of these, we don't need to replace all because we only have one instance of supplier name and amount in that Word document. If we listed their, the supplier name multiple times, we would want to keep on the replace all. Whether or not you, in this instant, whether or not you have it on or off, really doesn't matter. All right. So then what ha is in the template is a use Outlook. If you are using an Outlook application, you would go ahead and set it up. It looks very familiar. Um, you would do the same thing. So I already have it set up, but you would go ahead and say, add a new account. For a Gmail, you would put in your account and then it will actually ask you to go ahead and authenticate. So you would need to put in your username and password 
And if you have Duo or any other authentication procedures, you would need to do that. Okay. And then with it, so once again, so make sure this is also a two point, if you take out Outlook and put in Gmail, make sure this is at a 2.1.2. Otherwise you have it in the wrong box. Um, if it's a, a different number, you'll want to make sure you move it. If it's Outlook, you probably didn't move anything and you will be fine. And then you want to go ahead and add a send email. So you would look for that under here, under mail. You would just drag the send email and make sure it's under within this box in a 2.1.2.1. And you're going to say Gmail because that's what we're calling it up here. And we would say to... And we're saying the current row email. So that's the email address that we have in the spreadsheet. I'm going to just type in a subject and I just use the text option here. And I typed in supplier word and the body will just be normal text. Um, it, we don't actually have uh, any additional text. And it has, then I put in what attachments there are. And so I just look for that completed letter. So actually when setting this up, if you do have a completed letter, it's easier to point and click. Otherwise you need to type it in. Now, one thing that always got me when I was running this is I accidentally left this checkbox, save as draft. And so it put me, put the email that was supposed to go out in my draft emails rather than sending it. So you can do use the save as draft while you're testing, but if you actually want it to send, you will need the save as draft. Now that's actually a good precaution if you want to look at the emails uh, before sending them out. That might be a better way to go ahead and do that, especially while testing. But that actually completes the bot. So we are going to go ahead and save. And... I am actually going to go ahead and run the bot. Okay. And actually, yeah, so here it's opening up the Excel file. And here you can see it in Word. And it went quickly, but you didn't see it replace. If you're running it for the first time, you may all have to re re-authenticate your um, Gmail or Outlook email account one more time just to make sure that it connects. So, um, and if you don't do it quickly enough, sometimes the bot does fail. So if that's the case, re-authenticate. If it fails the first time, try it again. It's more than likely the fact that you you know, didn't get to Duo or any other uh, two-step authentication quickly enough. Um, other than that, if you have issues, it's double check your numbering of the boxes because that can actually cause the problem. So make sure they match what we have on the video. But other than that, that is your first pretty simple bot. I hope this worked well for you and thank you.